Hi and welcome to this short introduction to Ansible in the cloud. This session has been made possible by Intel. Intel does not only make great processors, but they are also a big contributor in the open source community. For instance, Intel is one of the largest contributors to the Linux kernel, uh, which benefits us all. So thank you, Intel. Before moving into the topic of Ansible, I just want to mention that we as Red Hat describe our solutions in terms of three pillars. The red one is hybrid cloud infrastructure, which is the foundation for consistently running your workloads on basically any footprint, be they on-prem or in a public cloud. The green one is cloud native development, which focusing on developing, deploying and managing applications. But the focus for this session is the blue one, management and automation, where Ansible automation platform plays a big part. When looking at the high level chart showing our product portfolio in terms of these pillars, we see that Ansible automation platform is just one of our offerings in the management and automation space, accompanied with products for our Kubernetes platform, OpenShift, and more traditional infrastructure. This session, however, focuses on Ansible. When you think about Ansible, the language, Three key words sort of come to mind, simple, powerful, and agentless. The first two maybe seem quite generic, but what it boils down to is that Ansible uh, uses modules and collections to do automations, which makes the scripting part of it very concise and still humanly readable. This is also actually the power of Ansible, all these modules and collections make it possible to do automation in so many different technology domains, be they public cloud, private cloud, any type of infrastructure. The third is that Ansible is agentless. That means that you don't need to install any software on the machines you want to automate. The only thing needed is the right, having the right credentials. So how popular is Ansible really? Well, uh, the Ansible upstream project is downloaded from GitHub about 4 million times a month. It's also the seventh largest project on GitHub when it comes to contributors. And from a Red Hat perspective, uh, Red Hat Ansible automation platform manages more than 4 million systems for our customers. So when you, when you think about Ansible um, and Ansible start to get traction in an organization, it's usually that some associates are tired of doing cumbersome repetitive tasks and instead they hit pip install Ansible and download the upstream Ansible core project, a set of common line tools for running Ansible automations. This is very, very easy to get going and you and you store all your automations, which are called playbooks in Ansible, all the modules you need to perform those automations, the inventory which hosts all the machines you want to automate, and the credentials for those machines all reside on your local computer. Um, with this uh, solution, you can automate basically anything within your organization. But if this tends to spread like it does with Ansible, the, in the end you will have a lot of different users having, their same, having the same credentials stored on their machines, their playbooks, etc. And it will be hard to keep track of logging, a role-based access control, etc. and who and when you can run automations. So it becomes cumbersome to manage. With Ansible Automation Platform, you use Ansible Controller as a central hub for all your automations. Ansible Controller is basically a web GUI and a very powerful REST API to be able to access and organize everything that has to do with Ansible. This means that, that the more users you get, both developers and automation users, 
everybody comes to the same place to access these automations. And you can keep track of logging all the automations and also have a central repository for all your playbooks, etc. So, what is the value of Ansible Automation Platform? Well, speed is kind of obvious when you start automating manual tasks. But what you can do with these tasks is also that you can make these ta multiple tasks into workflows and by there automating entire business processes. Reducing human error is also a big benefit of using Ansible Automation Platform. And not just reducing the error, but re reducing the stress of your employees needing to perform critical tasks manually in stressful situations. Any checklist you have uh, together with the tasks, there's always a possibility for doing the wrong thing in a stressful situation. Consistency, the last point. By having a universal automation language with automa Ansible Automation Platform in your organization, your, your different teams speak the same automation language and can share um, automations with each other. They can also share just best practices on how to work with automations. This creates consistency both for the actual automation developers and for the users of the automation. So what is Ansible Cloud Automation then? Well, this extensive number of modules and collections that we have to extend Ansible, those can can in the same time make possible different types of automations. For public cloud, for instance, there are collections from these vendors, Google Cloud, AWS, and Azure, to be able to perform all the automation tasks you need to do in your public cloud. There is also cloud native packages or collections for Red Hat, OpenShift, and Kubernetes to manage those platforms. In the private cloud, you have the ability to use Ansible to automate your OpenStack uh, configurations and deployments and your VMware and your Nutanix, everything for your bare metal needs. So how can you deploy Ansible Automation Platform? Well, to the left you see the, the most obvious self-managed options. You can run Ansible Automation Platform on your RHEL instance both on physical and virtual servers. You can even run Ansible Automation Platform in Red Hat OpenShift, also there on both physical and virtual servers. In, with the self-managed options, you as the customer have the responsibility for the life cycle of the product. In the middle here we see the Azure alternative, where you can actually use a managed service with Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, where Red Hat is responsible for the life cycle of the platform. On the two other clouds, which is Google Cloud and AWS, we also have customer deployed self-managed solutions. And all these solutions on the hyperscalers are available uh, with your committed spend. I will now demonstrate where to find Ansible Automation Platform on Google Cloud and Azure, uh, which is just a couple of clicks away. To access Ansible Automation Platform on Azure, just search the marketplace and make sure you got a version provided by Red Hat. For this demo, it's just under private products. Next step is to hit create. After that, I just need to create a new resource group and provide an administrative password for the Ansible controller. The next step is to configure some network settings, which I will fast forward. After that, hit the Create button and Azure will now deploy the virtual machines. Two for Ansible controller and one for the private automation hub. After 60 to 90 minutes, I can go to my resource group, find the URL for the Ansible controller under outputs, 
Copy that into a new browser window and log in. Now you need to provide your subscription or just request a trial version. And when that is done, we got access. And now I will hand over to my colleague Minus Glanz to show a more practical demo on how to manage multiple cloud instances within your Ansible automation platform. Red Hat and Intel enjoy a strong partnership that spans more than two decades. At the heart of this collaboration is our common focus on hybrid and multi-cloud infrastructure as the foundational building blocks for your digital transformation. Intel is not just a silicon company. We are the number one contributor to the Linux kernel, and we have over 20,000 software engineers working with partners like Red Hat to optimize software uh, on our architecture. Together, Red Hat and Intel help customers to navigate digital transformation with solutions that provide more choice, flexibility, and innovation. Red Hat and Intel have a long track record of delivering joint market-ready solutions to many industries and enterprises. Red Hat and Intel are the beating heart of the open source ecosystem. Our joint solutions are built on open platforms with enterprise-grade open source software and x86 architecture from edge to cloud. Red Hat and Intel solutions are supported by a strong ecosystem and are tested and validated before being certified or deployed in the Red Hat market space. Our engineers continuously work to harden our platform and solutions with industry standards and enterprise grade security. Open source and x86 offer you an open platform for innovation with choice and the agility to deploy, deploy quickly. We just launched the fourth gen Xeon processors, delivering uh, to customers a range of features for managing power and performance, making the optimal use of CPU resources to help achieve their sustainability goals. Unlike any other data center processors on the market, and already in the hands of customers today, the fourth gen Xeon family greatly expands on Intel purpose-built workloads, first strategy and approach. Today, there are over 100 million Xeons installed in the market, from on-prem servers running IT services, including new as-a-service business models, to networking equipment, managing internet traffic, to wireless base stations, computing at the edge, to cloud services. Thank you for your time. We look forward to collaborating with you to enrich your digital transformation journey with Red Hat and Intel solutions.